In this video, I'm going to be going over things that come into play when it comes to creating a hit song. When it comes to making a hit song, there's usually five things you have to keep in mind. There's catchiness, flow switch, the beat, a chant, and song duration. Alright, step one, the hook. If you've been paying attention to the music these days, they all have catchy phrases for the hook. Ah, oh, can't talk. And some examples are... God's plan. God's plan. Bad and bullshit. Bad. Cooking up dope with a oozy. So when you're making your hook, you want a catchy phrase that's going to be repetitive so it can get stuck in people's head like a uh, little pump scoochie game. And once you got that, you need a simple beat. Most hits nowadays consist of one or two melodies, drums, and an 808. The reason for that is it's easier to flow on and it leaves a lot of room for ad libs. And Migos and Lil Uzi take advantage of this. Alright, now that you got your beat and your hook, you need to maintain the energy until you get to the next hook. And with that comes flow switches and chants. When it comes to a number one song, you can't keep the same flow throughout the song. It's going to get boring. So you need to implement flow switches and chants to keep people on their edge or interested. Because people's attention spans these days are shorter than 8 seconds. So you need to occupy that. And an example of this would be the part in Kendrick Lamar's Humble. Hey, this shit way too crazy, hey. You do not amaze me, hey. I blew cool from AC, hey. Oh, how much is pace me, hey. The A flow is way overused, especially in the SoundCloud scene, but since he had a different flow prior to doing that, it kept the audience interested. And another way of maintaining energy and interest in your verses is to implement chants. Every hit song has that part where everybody's waiting for it. Say you're in a party, it's gonna be the part where the DJ stops the music and lets the crowd play it. My left stroke just went viral. Daddy, 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 slap on me now. Pass me some syrup. He say, do you love me? I tell her only partly. I only love my bed and my mom. I'm sorry. 50 dub. These chants usually occur at the second verses of the song because they're known as the best part of the song. So why would you put it at the first verse of the song so people can already get over with the best part and click off your song? You know, you want them to keep them there and have them wait for their best part. And then, yeah, hopefully the hook will be right after that so we can bring you through and the song will be over. We want, peace, uh, we want people to listen to the whole song, so we're gonna have to put it at the second verse so they have something to wait for. All right, last but not least is song duration. Now, hit songs are usually under three minutes, but I advise you to shoot for like two and a half minutes because people's attention spans again. You wanna fit right in that time frame because I've had moments where I've had a song that was like three minutes and 15 seconds and people be like, oh man, this song is so long and it's not even that long. So I say about shoot for 220 to 245. That's like the, the Goldilocks area. Yeah, and that wraps that up. And just to recap, for a hit song, you need a catchy phrase for a hook, you need a chant, you need a flow switch, and your song needs to be short. Now this is mainly for hip hop. It might be a different way when it comes to R&B. Um, let me know what other ways in the comments that you think can work for R&B or other genres. Once again, I'm Dices. Follow me on Instagram at I am Dices, and let me know in the comments if this helped you or not, so I can know the if I should keep doing these videos or not. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'm out.